In the near future, society has been divided into two defined social castes. On one hand, there's the uppers, who are the elite, living their lives with the latest technology. On the other hand, there's the lowers, who are the poor trying their best to survive. Today, the uppers are celebrating the marriage of Uma and son, although Uma doesn't look happy to be there. After singing a love song for her new husband and being reminded that she must perform her wifely duties, she leaves for the bedroom. By the time Sun joins her, Uma has already changed clothes, ready for their first night together. Sun is pleasantly surprised by how welcoming she is, because two months ago, she didn't even want to get married and was very difficult to deal with. It's precisely two months ago that this begins. Uma wakes up in a strange room, still wearing her pajamas but covered in mud. A voice in the wall welcomes her and promises breakfast, but when the servants came in with her food, Uma takes the chance to run away instead. She finds herself in an exotic building decorated with flowers everywhere, but when she tries to leave it, she almost falls off a cliff. Refusing to go back, she decides to hide inside a cave, and there she bumps into Amarna, who is smoking in secret while wearing a fancy white dress and immediately identifies her as a newbie. Amarna offers to help her escape, but as they leave the cave, Uma realizes she's been lying. Instead of leaving, Amarna turns her into the bodyguards. As they cross the gardens, Uma notices the places full of young girls, all wearing the same dress as Amarna and behaving like sweet ladies. Once she's taken back to the building, Uma meets the Duchess, the leader of this place. She explains this is paradise, an institution dedicated to emotional healing. Parents pay them to take in their feisty unruly girls and educate them into fine ladies. The stay only lasts two months, so the Duchess wants Uma to give the place a chance and once the treatment is done, to reconsider Sun's marriage proposal which she has been rejecting. Then, Uma is taken to her dorm, where she meets her new roommates, the very friendly Chloe, and Yu, who is angry about having to share and always wears headphones. They're all obliged to wear the white fancy dresses, and during dinner, they're given small dishes because Paradise runs a diet designed for physical health and mental equilibrium, with allergies and any other conditions accounted for. While having her meal, Uma notices Amarna keeps watching her, prompting Chloe to explain that's the famous singer Armana Vicario, who got sent here by her conservative parents as part of her detox. Later in the bathroom, Uma runs into Amarna, who explains she had to betray Uma because she didn't want the guards to find the cave where she secretly goes to smoke. She also asks Uma not to believe everything she hears about her, she doesn't drink anymore, she's actually been sent here because she got tired of being treated like a product and freaked out at her team. The only reason why she was able to put her hands on cigarettes is that one of the employee's daughter is a fan. After Amarna points out they're on an island so escape isn't easy, Uma still decides to try, and Amarna accepts to help. They agree to meet at midnight outside her room, and before leaving, Amarna kisses Uma on the cheek. However, when Uma pretends to go to bed later, she immediately falls asleep. The next morning, she tries to apologize to Amarna, only to discover she fell asleep as well. Next, the girls are obliged to get a new look. Yu absolutely hates it, but Chloe is happy to look prettier, even if she doesn't want to lose weight just because her parents are ashamed of her. Uma dyes her hair and feels rather different, but Amarna reminds her she doesn't have to change who she is. Afterward, Uma is taken to the Duchess for mirror therapy. Uma will be given questions that she must answer while looking at the mirror, but only if she wants to. This is in order for her to understand who she really is. But Uma isn't very open to this interrogation, she speaks badly of her mother for sending her here and still refuses to get married before stomping out of there. The rest of the day is spent doing peaceful activities like ballet and yoga, which Uma uses as a chance to bond with you. However in the middle of it, she thinks she hears some voices from behind the mirrored walls. Before she can investigate though, the teacher makes her concentrate on the exercises. Later, Uma is taken to a special room, where she's strapped to a carousel horse that is raised until it almost touches the ceiling. Then she's shown a video of Sun explaining what a great match he is. The first time, Uma just rolls her eyes, but when the video starts playing on repeat, she gets anxious and upset to the point her nails draw blood from her own hands. The servants come to get her after a while, apologizing for not stopping the tape in time, supposedly because the system malfunctioned. Uma stomps out of there to tell the Duchess a silly video isn't going to make her change her mind because she's already in love with someone else. This boy is a lower, and that's why her mother doesn't approve of him. The Duchess thinks Uma's dead father was a bad influence on her and advises her not to end up like her, alone on an island. During grooming hours, the girls share their stories. Uma's family is part of the upper class but they're broke, and this is why she's being pressured to marry son. Chloe was sent here to lose weight, and the video she was exposed to showed her people jogging and eating celery. Yu suffers from anxiety and panic attacks, this is the reason why she always has her headphones on. Her parents are lowers and sent her to live with her upper aunt and uncle, but she didn't know how to behave around them. Yu's only interested in going back to playing with her band, and it's her own music that she keeps listening to with her headphones. The four girls spend their routines together, which honestly aren't so bad if it weren't for the tiny meals and the exposition to those manipulating tapes. During mirror therapy, 
Both Uma and Amarna talk about a girl they met many years ago and fell in love with but never saw again, unaware they could possibly be talking about each other. One afternoon, while making flower crowns, the girls share their wishes for the future. Amarna wants to go somewhere far away where nobody knows her, and Uma wants a simple life with the boy she loves. Chloe realizes Uma is carrying a memory locket, so Uma shows them the hologram of her dad and explains this is the prototype he created and was used to make current models. Trying to comfort her, Amarna attempts to hold Uma's hand, but Uma rushes away when she sees her boyfriend Marcus has arrived on the island. Uma goes to a private spot to talk to Marcus. He explains he tried to visit her and her mother told him where she was, so Marcus took up a job as a gardener in paradise. The plan is to try to steal a cargo boat and escape together to start a new life. Then, Marcus uses a gadget he stole from the tech guys to hack the camera and make it show an empty room while the couple gets busy. Amarna sees them through a hole in the wall and cries her broken heart out. Later during dinner, Uma shares the news with her friends, but Amarna isn't supportive. She says Uma didn't help to escape, she just needs to fake during the treatments like the rest of them. When Uma points out she finally has a partner, Amarna wonders what she is and points out Uma can't trust Marcus. Meanwhile, other girls in the institute have been taking turns singing happy songs for everyone. But when Amarna's turn comes, she asks the music to stop so she can express her feelings in a love song a cappella, this is the same song Uma will choose at the wedding. However, Amarna's performance is cut short by their teachers, who find the song inappropriate. That night, Uma falls asleep watching the hologram of her father. But when she wakes up the next morning, she finds the locket is gone. At that moment, an alarm starts echoing in the whole building, it seems an unauthorized boat has arrived at the island. Uma demands to know what's going on but the Duchess insists on them getting ready for the day and even tries to drag Uma away. You jumps in to defend her and pushes the Duchess, which angers the woman and causes her to grab you by her face to push her against the wall. The Duchess threatens you with making her a failure as the flowers around them begin behaving strangely, so the girls cut in to defend you before things go too far. Snapping out of it, the Duchess apologizes for her behavior, blaming it on an impulsive moment, before leaving. Later, rumors around the Institute begin spreading about the man on the boat being Amarna Stalker. She doesn't deny this in public, but in private, she shows Uma a boat in the cave. This guy came here to help them, Amarna's achieved this thanks to the employee that is a fan of her and has been sneaking her some phone calls every now and then. There are no guards on the beach at night, so Amarna asks Uma to escape together later, and this time she knows how, they don't have to drink the milk. Last night, Amarna threw up her milk in the bathroom and managed to stay awake because it's the milk that has the sedatives that make them sleep like the dead. She discovered there are different employees working at night wheeling passed out girls around, she's also found Uma's locket on the patio near the mermaid statue. Amarna is more sure now than ever that they need to escape, but Uma needs to talk to Marcus first. The talk with Marcus goes well, but during dinner, an unexpected announcement is given, Amarna has graduated early, so she'll be leaving the institute tonight. She and Uma drink their milk, then meet at the bathroom to throw it up. Amarna tells her she can take the boat to run away with Marcus and gifts Uma her hairpiece, which hides a map inside. Uma promises Amarna that she'll find her, then the girls kiss and hug before Amarna leaves for good. That night, Uma manages to stay awake and sneaks out of her room, getting to see the men dragging girls around as Amarna said. Unfortunately, there are cameras everywhere, so Uma pretends to be passed out on the floor. The men find her and assume the sedative kicked in late, thus they take her back to her room. The next morning, Chloe notices Uma is acting different, and when Uma just blames it on bad dreams, Chloe points out she's never dreamed since she got here. Later, when Uma is out on the horse again, the tape changes, instead of sun, they show her old recordings of her late father. Uma enjoys seeing those even if they make her cry, but her mood turns sour when the video begins including the news of her father's death. He ended things for himself after his family-owned business was ruined by a hostile takeover. As she takes off the straps, Uma cries out for this to stop, and once the horse lowers her to the ground, she runs out of the room. Marcus ignores her request for help, and the guards end up catching her again to take her to the room she woke up in when she arrived. A few hours later, she's brought food and milk that she refuses to take, but the voice in the wall obliges her to do so anyway. The milk obviously puts her to sleep, and when she finally wakes up, Uma is taken out of the room and put in front of a screen that shows her some shocking news. Amarna is back in Hollywood, showing off her new boyfriend to the press. Heartbroken, Uma begins crying and is startled when the Duchess approaches her from behind, which makes her push her away. The Duchess falls on her desk and gets a cut on her face, but she proceeds with her speech as if nothing happened. She tells Uma that she's been sleeping for two weeks and now it's finally time for her graduation, so she'll be leaving the next day. Desperate to escape before she's sent back to her family, Uma takes you and Chloe to the cave. The girls explain the guards told everyone that Uma went nuts and destroyed the horse, and in return, Uma shares the milk trick and what she saw on the screen, convinced they did something to Amarna to change her behavior. Uma wants Chloe and you to escape with her, Chloe accepts, but you doesn't. 
Afterward, Uma talks to Marcus, who laments not having been able to steal a boat sooner. He promises his contract ends in a few days and that he'll find her as soon as he gets to leave, so Uma pretends to agree to meet him later, giving him a hug to steal the camera hacking gadget from his pocket. During dinner, Uma and Chloe drink their milk and go to the bathroom to spit it out. Inspired by her friends, Yu decides to join them and does the same. Later in their room, they have to pretend to be asleep because the night employees come by. They say Chloe and Uma are complete, so it's Yu the one they take away because she has a session left. As soon as they're gone, Uma and Chloe grab Yu's headphones and follow them, getting to see how the men enter a hidden room behind the mermaid statue where Amarna had found Uma's locket. The girls go after them and find Yu in an operation room with two doctors. Chloe tackles the one with a scalpel in his hand, and when the man tries to choke her, giving Chloe the chance to retrieve the scalpel and stab him. The other doctor is trying to sedate you, so Uma hits him with the gas tank, and when he turns around to kill her, you uses the sedative on him instead. You still gets a bit dizzy from the sedative that she did absorb, so Chloe and Uma put on her headphones and help her walk out of there after Uma steals a scalpel from the table. Eventually, they make it to a room full of computers that reveal they haven't been educating the girls, they've been studying and documenting their behavior. They've even recorded Uma getting busy with Marcus, which means the gadget doesn't work and Marcus has been working for the institute all along. When the guards find them, the girls run away again and enter a new room, locking the door to leave the guards behind. In this room, they find a group of girls with bandaged faces. It's here that they finally learn the real intentions of paradise, they pay girls from the lowers to become the patients that the parents sent to the institute. They get cosmetic surgery and study their behavior to copy as much as possible, only modifying the little things that the parents wanted to be changed. Then the copies are sent to the families as if they were the result of the girls having learned to behave, and the real girls are killed. As the copy of you explains all this to them, the real you dies, and the Chloe copy reveals herself as a not fat version of her. Uma isn't sure where her copy is so she talks to all of them, explaining that they'll never be a good copy of her because they don't have to carry the memory of her late father and they don't hate son, who is the man responsible for her father's death. Then, the guards finally make their way inside. Uma leaves her locket with the copies and runs away with Chloe. They take the elevator and reach a hidden tunnel that takes them to a garden filled with roses and thorns. Suddenly, Chloe screams, and Uma loses her just as she realizes the plants catch the girls once their treatment is complete, and all of their bodies including Amarna's are there. The Duchess is there too, feeding on Chloe because she's a vampiric rosebush, which grants her the ability to control the plants. She captures Uma in her bushes, but when she's about to kill her, Uma's copy shows up pretending to be the real one. Both girls start arguing over who is the real one, so when the Duchess approaches Uma for a closer inspection, Uma takes the chance to stab her with the scalpel and finally kill her. The tunnel begins crumbling and the girls run away intending to find the boat, only to come across Marcus. As they threaten him with the scalpel, he cries and says the Duchess lied to him, making him believe Uma had chosen son over him. Uma doesn't believe him and asks how much he got paid, but Marcus says he won't accept the money and when the other guards contact him through the radio, he responds he hasn't seen anyone. The girls still escape without him, and after getting her locket back, Uma gets to know the girl under her face better. Her name is Anna, and she took this job because she was an orphan working 16 hours in a factory but that still wasn't enough to take care of her brothers. So when a man showed up in town with this offer, she didn't think about it twice and accepted to become someone else in order to survive. Uma rows away with the island with a plan in mind. The day of the wedding, Anna is the one that endures the ceremony, but it's Uma that Sun finds in bed. Uma stabs Sun with a knife, which makes Anna a widow that will inherit the fortune. When Anna arrives at the room, she isn't surprised to find the body, and after saying goodbye to Uma from the balcony, she screams. The mother comes to check on her, believing her to be innocent, while Uma runs away to find the place on Amarna's map. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.